relatively recently, just in the last couple of years, a group in Israel led by Nachum Ulanovsky found grid cells in bats and showed that initially they were just doing bats crawling around in the environment. So they were you know, behaving similar to the rats. Um, and they found cells in the entorhinal cortex that fire in the same pattern as grid cells in rats with this regular hexagonal array in the environment. But what was surprising about that was that they didn't find continuous theta frequency oscillations. Instead of, instead of finding continuous oscillations of the sort you would see in a rat exploring the environment, instead they would see brief periods of oscillation that last for one or two seconds and then stop, even though the grid cells were firing you know, dependent continuously on the location of the bat. Uh, and this is actually somewhat similar to what they found in humans and in monkeys when they look at theta rhythm oscillations. So the Israeli group was arguing that this suggested that the continuous oscillations that are present in the rat are not the mechanism for generating grid cells, that there might some be some different mechanism for generating grid cells in the bat. So in response to that, we've actually gone recently and looked at some of the cellular properties of the neurons in the bat to see if they have oscillatory dynamics because we'd shown in the rat that grid cells at different positions, anatomical positions in the entorhinal cortex will have different spacing between the firing fields. Um, and the same thing appears in bats. We had shown in the rats that the cells that have narrow spacing between the firing fields have a higher frequency oscillation when you look at the cell and the ones with larger spacing have a lower frequency oscillation. So we thought we would look for these same cellular oscillations in the bat and what we found surprised us which was that we didn't see the sort of high frequency oscillations that we saw in the rat when we looked in the bat. So our data seemed to agree with the, the data from the um, the Israeli group looking at the grid cells in the bat. So a big focus for us is understanding why there's this difference in the characteristics between the rats and the bats. And it could be due to the fact that the, the demands on the rats for their behavior are very different from the bats. Um, and it might also be that there's a different mechanism for generating the grid cells in the bats versus the rats. So one of the things we'd most like to, like to understand is what's going on during these brief bouts of theta rhythm activity in the bat versus the continuous theta rhythm in the rat. Um, and in particular, it might be that in the bats that there is really rapid processing of sensory information about spatial location because the bats have the capability of doing echolocation that the rats don't have, so the bats can just send out some of their um, echolocation sounds and get the location of various objects in their environment to keep track of their location. Um, and that might be something that they can do, you know, they do that multiple times, not only during the theta bouts, but they might use that information to make a map of their environment just during the periods of the theta bouts in contrast to the rats that might have to you know, make this map build up more slowly as they're moving around the environment. We've been working on how this works related to some of the computational models that are used for guiding robots in the environment. And that's useful because there's all sorts of algorithms that have been developed for, for, for robots that give some insight as to how um, you would keep track of your location and environment and correlate that location with the configuration of visual cues or other sensory cues at particular locations.